Hello, wrestling fans. Action Mike Jackson here with you. Ten times U.S. Junior Champion. Here, live and in color with my man, Wolfie D. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13 to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Live and in Color with Wolfie D and my man, Jimmy Across the Street. What's going on? What up? What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, oh, I'm doing great. How about you? Shake your hand. All right. Good job. Yeah. Nice to meet you, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm, you know, doing all right, man. Just, you know, Staying my day. up all night, editing the show, editing <laughs> the show uh, sleeping very little. <laughs> yeah that's kind of the deal yeah, yeah. it's like what did i sign up for man <laughs> <laughs> yeah you signed yourself up there buddy <laughs> I, know. I know i know hey it's- everybody we got uh we got the plush pg-13 um superstar buddies in uh so superstar. if anybody wants some of those get a get in touch with us uh on here or you know, somewhere on my social media uh 20 bucks plus a seven dollars shipping uh they're double-sided the artwork's done by me um you know one side is me one side is jamie and yes. if you would like to paint over one side and send you that one can but uh, <laughs> <laughs> somebody said can i get half for 12.50 <laughs> it's like that chris rock <laughs> yeah can I, can yeah I get- yeah can I get lot? <laughs> can I get one rib for fifty cent? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much to just? Oh, wow, that's a lot of money. <laughs> How much for some Sprite or whatever it is? Like, How much just pour it in my hand for a dollar? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. Old school Chris Rock. Yeah. So Mike Jackson, Action Mike Jackson, is joining us today. Uh-huh. Yep. The Interessante. Yeah, I'm excited. I've never met this gentleman, but man, he's been around forever and knows everybody. Right. You know, he knows. Taking the- bumps at 73, bro. I <sighs> can't even imagine. Yeah. Can't even imagine. Because that's my dad's age. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my pop's yeah. age. And, like, I yeah. just can't imagine my dad bumping. <laughs> yeah, man, dude. Bump, if, if you pick up the average 73-year-old man, body slam him on the ground, he's going to the ER right, right. then. right. Exactly. So, We've talked about this before, you know? Yeah. And man. and I just don't know how these guys do it. And I get it. You you do develop and probably here's the thing, because I've heard you talk about this before, like your your bump callus or whatever it is. You know what I mean? The, yeah, yeah, you yeah. keep doing it so it doesn't hurt, right? Yeah, I think that's yeah. probably it. He's like, Well, if I'm gonna still do this, I just gotta keep doing it full time. Because <laughs> if right, I don't, yeah. it's really gonna start hurting. But yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, well, well you know, Curry. Yeah, we did have Al Perez on last week. That was awesome. Everybody turned out. I hope y'all enjoyed that one as much as Wolfie and yeah. I did. I don't even know if it's possible to have enjoyed it more than you and I. But <laughs> for sure, we'll go with that. But yeah, thank y'all for tuning out for that one. Tune it, turn it out for that one. <laughs> tune it out. Don't tune us out. Uh, don't tune us out. Don't tune us out. T- turn it in. <laughs> Turn this tune us in. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's get Mike Jackson on the phone. <laughs> I think we should. Yeah, at this point. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. Hey folks, to get your official live and in color with Wolfie D merchandise, go to pro wrestlingtees.com forward slash live Wolfie D. Check it out. If you're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. Thanks again. All right, we're back. We got another special treat for you folks this week. We have got Action Mike Jackson. And my first question for you, Mr. Jackson, is how in the world do you still have any credit left on your bump card? That's what I want to (laughs) know. Well, 
the good Lord is good to me, and I'm well blessed. I'm in probably as good a health as I was because I have to take care of myself about my age and, you know, still yeah. doing the wrestling two or three days a week and still yeah. doing some TVs in different places. So uh, I'm well blessed, and, uh, you know, I just try to take care of myself, and uh, I guess I'll keep going until the good Lord says no more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. You, uh, I've met you. I mean, obviously, I've known who you were for, since I was a kid watching you on TBS. And, uh, that makes me old, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. It makes it your age, <laughs> but, um, th- we met, uh, a couple of years ago, <laughs> slam anniversary for TNA and the reverse battle yeah. roll. When they called me for that, I had to look it up. I didn't know what a reverse battle roll was. So, you know uh, what? I can say the same thing. I've been doing this 55 <laughs> years. I've never heard of one of those things. I know it. And, I know it. <laughs> and I still never got in. <laughs> I still never got to the ring. So, so far I'm <laughs> over one for those things. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah you did the uh the walk around the ring gimmick uh yeah that. and and that's not something is that something you kind of just started doing because i don't remember you doing that like on tv oh, and stuff. no uh, I, I, you know I've, I've been doing it for as many years as i can remember now probably yeah. not on tv on tbs because there's no time for you know right. you've done tvs well if you know what i'm talking yeah. about you don't have much time to do anything in those tv sometimes yeah. four or five six minutes at best yeah. So don't yeah. give you a lot of time for that, but I've been doing that for as many years as I can remember. Seems to me so, like I would see it in like the magazines and stuff. I would, uh, it uh-huh. wouldn't be like on TV, but I would always see something about it in the magazines. It's it yeah. Like. Yeah. So I guess Mike, it's safe to say that, uh, the undertaker kind of took it from you. Well, I don't know about that because he doesn't go, but too many steps, but, but of course he's making a whole lot more money than I was. So I guess he can walk as far as he wants to, but, uh, <laughs> wasn't his I try to go all the way around. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't his more like Don Jardine kind of where he would do a couple steps and then drop. And yeah. Yeah. You, you kind of took it, you took it all the way around, which is unheard of to me and almost seems very Lucha based. You know what I'm saying? How those guys yeah. nowadays will walk the ropes. It's like Mike Jackson was doing that back in the day, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, since you said that, you know, I'm not, I know you didn't put me on the show to brag about myself and I don't want to, but <laughs> You know, I was doing a lot of things back in the 70s and 80s that guys are doing now that they think, man, these guys are doing all kinds. Me, Hector Guerrero, guys like that were doing these kind of things, diving, walking top ropes, Herka Karanas. You know, we just didn't get the credit for it. You know, right. now that the yeah. TV's gotten so big with with the WWE and the WCWs and different things like that, that you know, with the, with the, the millions of people and in, in audiences and crowds, and, you know, they seem to get all the credit. But, hey, there was guys doing these things years and years ago that we really didn't get the credit for. Yeah. 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 And, and man, I can only imagine though, because I know your position uh, like at TBS and everything. I mean, guys had to be wanting to die to, to work with you to, to make them look good. Like I know flair loved you. Correct. Uh, he did. And, and you know what you're saying doesn't hurt my feelings a bit. I've been <laughs> called a job guy. I've been enhanced. I mean, Tommy dreamer is a good friend of mine and he came up with the term enhancement talent, you know, yeah. But but in my situation, when I li- when I I, mean, I was full time from from I started in seventy. My first full time job was seventy three when there were territories. If you y'all are probably too young to remember territories. I no. was in Memphis territory, so I, I was okay. you know, the last ones to survive. <laughs> well, I was in I was in the the Birmingham part when it split up to do Memphis and and Nashville. I was yeah. in that group right there, so in the split. But uh, I was back in the territory days when you were working, you know, seven days a week or seven nights a week or sometimes two or three times on Saturday and and, right. and, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that uh, you did. I, I saw an interview somewhere. Where you said you broke in with Jerry Jarrett. Jerry Jarrett and Jeff are the ones that gave me my break in the business. So talk about yeah. Jerry Jarrett for a minute. Well, a brilliant mind. Uh, yeah. He and Jeff both. I, uh, uh, matter of fact, I've stayed at their house before over in Hendersonville when Jerry was alive and Jeff was just a kid. Me and Austin Idol stayed there a couple of times. But yeah. Jerry was a good friend. But when I first broke in, you know, I did independent shows or outlaw shows, whatever you want to call them, for probably, gosh, about about a year and a half. And then, you know, I figured, I came to the point that if I'm going to do this and, and, and make a living out of it, you know, because I have, two, I have a, two master's degrees and I was teaching school and I, I was making more money 
working a couple of days a week for the real wrestling than I was, you know, teaching school. So I figured if I was going to do this, I needed to get with it. So got with Nick Goulas and, and that was back when Nick Goulas and Jerry Jarrett were working together. And, gotcha. you know, th- there were okay. two towns like Birmingham was on Monday night and Memphis was on Monday night to mid South Coliseum. So there right. were two towns on Tuesday and two or three on Wednesday. So you were just, you know, you just bounced back and forth from one to the other. So, well, Jerry Jarrett, he was part of the booking committee when I was there in Nashville, lived in Nashville and moved from Birmingham to Nashville, me and my tag team partner. Mm-hmm. And Jerry was in charge of that. And then, then announced to all of us, uh, there was a split. Jerry uh, Lawler and Jerry Jarrett did the Memphis side. Nick Goulas kept the Nashville side. And, you know, and, and, uh, so it was still, it's still territories. It was just a split there. Now, uh, we were we were just wrestlers. We didn't understand, you know, all the all the logistics of it and all the the background of it. But you know, the bottom line was it was a split. So you know, we were still getting to work, and and you know, we didn't know everything. We just did what we were told, and we just took the book and sheet and went where we were told to go. Yeah, right, right. But Jarrett was a he's a brilliant mind. I mean, he was he was a good wrestler. Uh, he and Tojo teamed up for many years, and you know, he he yeah, uh, the Jarrett family is very special to me, and you know, he helped me a lot. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I finished, when, when, when the territories kind of died down for me, uh, Jerry, mm-hmm. Jerry, Jerry was in, was in Atlanta and he brought me to Atlanta mm-hmm. to TBS the first, he was the first one to bring me to Atlanta. Uh, huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he, he's pretty yeah. special to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah no absolutely. Doubt. Me too. Uh, you know, <laughs> Jeff saw me and, uh, Jamie Dundee, that was my partner. And, uh, he yeah. saw us in an outlaw, outlaw show in Kentucky in like 92 and uh, he actually held the video camera recorder for us. He said, I'm, I'm going to take this to my dad. And uh, we got the call and uh, we showed up at Jerry's house. And Jamie said, if we make him laugh, we got a job. <laughs> and we put on the shorts <laughs> and the hubcap and, you know, all that mess. And uh, sure enough, we walked in there and he started giggling. <laughs> and he said, can you write a rap? And I said, I absolutely sure can. <laughs> so <laughs> he did the little uh, videos for us for like a month, and the uh, rest was history after that. So, yeah, he's yeah, very special hey. with me. Unfortunately, well, you guys had a good run. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I've ever met Jamie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you would you remember. might not want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever met him, but, you know, I worked with his dad for many years. I, I was in. Matter of fact, I was in in the in the uh, southeastern continental area when he first yeah. came to the United States. Him and a guy named George Barnes came together. George and, Barnes and, uh, from yeah, and Paul Strait. And I don't ever know what happened to George, but Bill stayed and and uh, made a heck of a run for himself. You know, uh, uh, Bill was a good yeah. friend. Him, him and Jerry Lawler both. So, you know, like I said, yeah. they split up. And but uh, it, man, if you can work that Memphis side, the Memphis side was always good. Birmingham would draw maybe four or five thousand back. That was back in the day. But Memphis, right. uh, Mid South Coliseum would draw fifteen thousand. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. I, yeah. I was fortunate. <laughs> yeah, I was exactly, exactly. I was fortunate to be there many Monday nights and loved every bit of it. Who who'd you love to work with in the Memphis territory? Well, now when I I didn't do Memphis a lot because, like I said, when they split, I ended up on the Nick Goulas end for some yeah. reason or another. Yeah. Right, right. But, but when I went to Memphis, the the, the the gosh, I got to work with. There was a group called the Mighty Yankees. Was Frank Morrell and Charlie Fulton? Oh, I yeah. think y'all might not remember those names. Yeah, but they were I used hot to ride as fire. With Frank all the time. <laughs> oh, he Frank was great. Was my, I loved my riding buddies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. I loved working with Frank Morrell. Yes, and yeah. they were there. And uh, gosh, uh, uh, Tommy Gilbert and uh, the Gilbert yes. family. I mean, that, those those guys were there. You know, it, 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 everybody was great. I mean, there wasn't anybody there that I didn't like to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Jimmy. I know you got something for him. Well, you know, I mean, first of all, this is just an honor, man, because I've been, I mean, I've watched you all my life. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've, I've been a big mid Atlantic fan and I just remember you, you know, making those guys look so great. I guess, let me, let me ask you this. So the, what are some similarities and differences and just complete differences in back then and today, because a lot of people, if you all don't know, Mike is very active on the current scene and is actually recently or is a current member of the TNA roster. So when it comes down to it, what would you say is totally different? And what would you say is exactly the same? Well, back when I go back to the jobber or the enhancement talent, 
you know, first of all, you have to accept your role in this business. And I accepted my role when I, when I was full time and, you know, I did those that year or two, a year and a half, two years, we were doing it every night. And, you know, we were tag, me and my partner were tag teams and, you know, we won this belt and we were there and had all this kind of stuff. We had a lot of notoriety and magazines and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, I guess we'll feel, tell you those things play out eventually. One day you're that one day you're there, yeah. one day you're not there. Right. And yeah. when they called me to Atlanta TV and I realized what I was doing, is, is, is getting these guys over and, 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 you know, you can either accept that role or you can reject it. And, yeah. you know, I, I accepted it and I was proud of what I did. I, I worked with a lot of guys. As a matter of fact, uh, just a, a quick story. When I went to Atlanta, Ole Anderson was the booker. He was the booker and, 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 and the road warriors came in and animal yeah. came in first, you know, yeah. it's like a, some kind of construction worker or something. And, and finally <laughs> yeah. he, he put yeah. me with him every week. And he said, if you don't teach this guy to work, he's going to kill somebody. Well, I, I thought <laughs> that's a great honor, but I'm the one he's killing every week. You know, I'm the one taking clotheslines from, you know, where. You know, yeah. but you know, I accepted my role. Uh, I'm proud of what I did. And when when a guy like Rick Flair would go through that, go to go to TBS and say, "I want to work with Mike Jackson," or "I want to work with George South," you know, somebody like that. I mean, I was proud of that. You know, and yeah. and, and I think that's yeah. why I'm still where I'm at today. I never was a star. I won't be a star tomorrow. But I was respected. I'm still respected by people in the business. And you know, I have no enemies. So. Yeah. I accepted it and I did it, but it's a whole different world nowadays because back when I was doing this, you know, JJ Dillon or Ole or somebody would call me, Bill Watts, uh, uh, back Jack Lanza in a different territory, Dusty Rhodes would call me and say, look, we need 15 guys in Atlanta for Saturday TV. Well, yeah. that was, they don't have it anymore because everybody's got contracts. So right. yeah. now and when we were going, I mean, it was great for us because I had like 35 or 40 guys that were working for me that I was carrying and I was booking Atlanta TV for the, for the, mm. putting the job guys with the, with the top guys. And, you right. know, but it's not like that anymore. All these guys with contracts were sitting around and not doing anything. And so they finally figured out one day we're wasting a whole lot of money. So right. contracts right. are gone. So they don't have those quote job guys, quote, un, you know, un, anymore. It's just, you know, yeah. it's more or less talent versus talent type yeah. thing, which I understand okay. that right. it's dollars and cents. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. That makes total sense. But to, but to do what I did, you have to, you, you have to accept it. I either decided a long time ago, either I accept this role and go and work every week and make a lot. I made a lot of money doing this or yeah. then, right. or boycott it and just not do it and sit at home and not do anything, you know, because right. I couldn't walk yeah. in the office and say, look guys, I'm Mike Jackson. If you don't give me a better push, I'm quitting. They would probably say, well, we'll see you later. You know, don't call us. We'll call you type thing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, I accepted yeah. it and, and, you know, I, and I was doing the same thing for, for the Florida territory. I was doing the same thing for Canada. I was doing the same thing for WWE. I was doing the same thing, same thing for a uh, mid South Bill Watts. So I, we, I was working every week, you know, a lot making more money than I ever made in my life, you know, and, you know, doing what I was told to do. I mean, it's a job, it's a business. And that's the way I treat it. Still treat it like that today. Yeah. 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 And one thing though, you said that I have to disagree with you on is saying that you're not a superstar. Amen. You may not <laughs> no. Be, uh, <laughs> no, you may not be like a household name to like a, a person that's not like a wrestling fan, but a, anybody. And I know you, you absolutely have the respect of your peers, but I guarantee you any person that knows wrestling, knows who Mike Jackson is. Amen. Well, I appreciate that. And, you know, guys, there was a time when, when Animal came to me just probably before he died, maybe three or four years later or before when he was still wrestling, and he told me one day, he set me down, he said, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you doing what you did to help me out because, I mean, we took some good beatings from those, <laughs> from those guys, <laughs> but, you know, we helped them to get to where they were. Not that we, you know, not that we gave them the push, not we gave them the angles yeah. and all this stuff. Yep. But we helped them to learn, and and they would even come to me and say, "What do we need to do in this TV to get over? How do we need to do this?" And I'd say, "Hey, you know, if you need to press slam me, this is how we need to do this kind of stuff, you know." And yeah. and they appreciated that, it, you know. And they even put me on their DVD. He came back and said, "Man, if you don't mind, I want to put you on our DVD." I said, "Man, by all means." Of course, I'm getting killed on it, but who cares? 
I'm on it. I'm on it. Yeah. Hey, that's one of my claims to fame because one of their DVDs, I'm on the back of it taking the move from them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, them yeah. That's that's the you all had that in common. You were both killed yeah. by a road warrior. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was killed many times by the road warrior. <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. Yeah, but enough. but yeah. let me let me tell you this. One time there was a time in Birmingham when Russell Birmingham was running, which was was a good organization, and Animal and Paul Ellen were supposed to be on the show, and Paul Ellering didn't show up. And this just shows his respect. You know, I had no idea that Paul Ellering wasn't going to be there. And when they, when he didn't show up, Animal went into, I think Robert Fuller was a booker, and said, look, Paul's not going to be here, but I want Mike Jackson to be my partner tonight. You know, I mean, that's that was an honor to me, you know. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So people, yeah. some people don't forget what they did, you know, as they grew up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure, man. Yeah. Um, so I I also saw that, uh, and I don't know if this is uh, how current this one is, but uh, talk about an odd couple. You and Tommy Rich, tag team champions uh, uh, somewhere. I can't remember where I've read that, but it, it, is that a current thing or is that something else? 2019? Well, it, was that? Right? Yeah, I worked for I worked a pretty good bit for a group called GCW Game Changer uh, out of uh, New York. And uh, I love working for those guys. And the first time that I worked for him was in Tallahoma, Tennessee at a place called the Gypsy Joe arena. Yeah. And oh, Tommy yeah, was there. Well. Yeah. Tommy was there. And, uh, and, and we wrestled two guys I'd never heard. I've never seen. And next thing I know, we're their tag team champions. And, you know, <laughs> we, I don't think we ever defend. I don't think we ever defended the belts again. Cause I went back the next time, a uh, uh, time later. And I told the guy, I said, you do know that I'm still your tag team champion. Don't you? He said, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> So Let me guess. That, that was, was a one time thing, I guess. <laughs> you contact, yeah, yeah it was, that was the group. That was the area, yeah. Yes. That's how they booked down there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God bless them. That was so I, get, I never lost the belt. <laughs> <laughs> so you and Tommy are still reigning tag team. Yeah, me and Tommy are still champions. <laughs> well, Good old Tommy. I, I rode many a mile with him, too. You, did you and Tommy? Yeah, I like while? Tommy. Yeah, good guy, good guy. Yeah, uh, helped yeah. me a lot. I mean, that was my first yep. push. Really, was me and Jamie against Tommy and and Doug Gilbert, and uh, yeah. Tommy Rich and Doug Gilbert. And uh, so, yeah, Tommy, let me go way back. Got a lot of funny stories with him. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, if me, you can tell them, I'd love to hear them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I better not tell all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't tell all my Tommy stories either. Um, Jimmy, go ahead. So. The greatest wrestler you've ever worked, and why is his name Bobby Eaton? <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, Bobby, you know, I helped Bobby get started. He was with a guy named Arvell Hutto out of Huntsville, Alabama. We know Arvell. And, yeah, we know yep, Arvell. They, they were, yeah, yeah, great workers. They were just doing stuff around there, and I saw him, and that was back when I was full-time. That was in the early 70s, probably, or mid-70s, and yeah. You know, I told Dick Goodis, I said, there, there's a couple of guys over there that, you know, that, that, that you need. And uh, I, I didn't, there's no way I did what Bobby did because Bobby did most of that on his own. But I just helped him get into to where he could be seen more than just, you know, these little independent outlaw shows. Right. But, uh, mm -hmm. there, you know, there's very few guys in this business who are just born with natural ability. I mean, there's guys that are born to be able to hit a baseball. There's guys that hit a golf ball. You know, they work yeah. at this stuff. But Bobby Eaton was natural ability. Brad Armstrong, same way. Brad Armstrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those guys, uh, those guys could, you could, you could call one spot and they could, it'd be their first match ever and they could hit it like a million dollars, like they've been in the business 20 years. And yeah. Bobby Eaton was so yeah. smooth and so graceful. And, uh, you had so many good runs with so many different little groups, the Midnight Express, and he did the, I think, the Bloodlines or Roll, whatever they call them. But you know, everything yeah. Bobby did when he got going was was top stuff, and he should have been because he he was that good. Everybody yeah. wanted Bobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was Absolutely. smooth. Yeah, yes, sir. And uh, it's funny, man. I'm I'm noticing so many coincidences with you and I, uh, uh, Arvel Hutto. So when I broke into business at like 16, uh, I was like tag teaming with Arvel down in oh, really? Alabama. At, yeah. yeah. Uh, with Arvel at, for Thurman Dolan. It was the promoter. Yep, I remember Thurman. Uh, yep. And uh, Way so, yeah, so Arvel, Arvel Hutto was one of the first guys I ever tag teamed with as a as a young teenager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Arvel, Arvel was a great worker. He just wasn't as flamboyant. As Bobby, yeah. I mean, I mean, Bobby, Bobby's, you know, there's another guy that in the seventies that are doing stuff off the top rope, dropping leg drops and stuff like that, that, you know, that people think, well, they just started that. No, they didn't. Bobby was doing it in the seventies 
and, yeah, and, right. and smooth as silk. And Orville was, Orville was as good a worker. He just didn't have, you know, in this business, you know it as well as I do, you got to have that, that charismatic, uh, uh, flamboyant attitude. And, you, you know, yeah. the people, I mean, there's guys that I've worked with all my life that, that, that I didn't think were really great wrestlers, but they could talk and they could put people in the seat. And that's what it's all about. Exactly. That's what it's all yeah. about. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. Putting people yeah. in the seats. Yeah. You know, you bring up Arvel Hutto, you got to bring up, and he's this, this guy I'm about to bring up. Our listeners may not know who this is, but you, you should know who this is. He's actually one of my favorite people. I know Wolfie knows him well, and I know you know him well. If you bring up Arvel, you know, you got to bring up, or you may call him Jim Pride or Tommy Montana or maybe Dante or Tommy Heggie. Tommy Heggie. Man. Yeah, I team with Tommy Heggie. We did a little yeah. we did a little tag team gimmick uh, before. Tommy was great. Yeah, I don't know whatever happened to Tommy, but well, he did a lot of good stuff over the years, but but he was good. Yeah, I've interviewed him before and he he brought up and I it was like every time I said, "How did you get to this place? How did you go to Mid-South?" How, oh, well, Mike Jackson. <laughs> yeah. So he, yeah. He, he, well, he gave you, you know. Yeah, when I went to I'll tell you that story. When I went to Atlanta TV for the first time, you know, I, this is a hard business, really. People don't understand that. After I've done that, that two-year run, and, and, you know, I got discouraged, you know, because, you know, you got seven bookings, and then all of a sudden you got four, then you got two, you're starving to death, and, you know, you, you get discouraged, you want to quit, and, and that's when Jerry Jarrett, I, I was ready to quit, and Jerry Jarrett called me and said, hey, come to Atlanta TV. I went to Atlanta TV, and I worked with a guy named Ray Stevens. I don't know if y'all remember him, AWA oh, World yeah. Champion. Yeah. Crippler, yeah, and, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. And, and I went out there, never saw the guy in my life, never talked to him in my life. Had an unbelievable match, put me over like a million dollars. When I went back to the dressing room, as I was walking back to the dressing room, Ole Anderson stopped me, said, "Can you come back next week?" You know, and I said, "Yeah." And I got two or three guys that that, that I know that would love to come do it, and and they had the right attitude for it, and they were good workers, and and, and one thing led to another, and before it was over, I was booking like thirty-seven or let thirty about forty guys that was working with me were traveling all over the country, so. You know, uh, uh, guys like Tommy Hagen, you know, Orville Hutto was, was guys in the George South and the Jeffers brothers and Mulkey brothers. And, you know, I had all these guys working for me. We were traveling everywhere. And, you know, just you just have to like what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure. When you stop not liking going out there and hurting yourself, then. <laughs> yeah. 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 Really <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine, uh, and, and maybe you've done something similar, but during the pandemic, I, I wasn't wrestling and, uh, I, I was, I was watching some of these shows and things thinking, man, I would hate to have to go out there in front of nobody. Cause you know how much more it hurts. Yeah. That way, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't imagine. That. I, I never had to do that, but but when I did my first Impact show, uh, just to tell you this real quickly, uh, you know, uh, Tommy Dreamer saw me at, at the Fan Fest over in Charlotte. I never met Tommy Dream in my life, and I introduced myself, and, and he was very nice. He said, man, I know who you are. And uh, I said, well, look, I've got a match out here tonight. I would like for you to watch me because I knew, I knew he was tied up with Impact and, and uh, TNA yeah. and all. I knew he had a lot of pull. And he said, I'm going to watch the whole match. And I thought, yeah, right. Ain't nobody's going to stand out there and watch 10 minutes of this. He watched the whole thing. When I walked back, when I walked back to the dressing room, he, you know, and, and, and I know I'm not the greatest wor- worker in the world, but, but as an older guy, and still doing the things, the dives and the top rope stuff like that. Yeah. People respect that. And Tommy Absolutely. came back to me and said, can you come to Philadelphia to the House of Hardcore and do a show for me? I said, yeah. And then he sold Scott DeMore on me coming to Impact to work with Johnny Swinger. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. they did a thing with, where they're supposed to be the M. Jackson was really Matt Jackson, what they were trying to push, and the young guys. And, you know, I went out and did the thing with Swinger. And did the dive and did her crown of head scissors. I walked the top rope. When I went back to the thing, Scott Demore came to me, which he was not for this in the beginning. I, I fought, and because uh-huh. it was old guys, I was seventy years old at the time. And you know, yeah. then he came back as soon as I walked back and dressed him. He said, "Hey, could you make an interview for me?" And he gave me four more bookings. But then the COVID hit yeah. the very next week, and uh-huh. I thought they had talked to me about a contract. You know, I I, had, I never signed a contract in my life, but. They, mm-hmm. they talked to me about possibility of coming and working for them, you know, as, as one of their permanent guys in the COVID hit. And yeah. what you're talking about, they went to the dark shows and they called me back right. and said, you know, we just can't hire anybody right now because we don't have an audience. So yeah. I never did any of the dark matches, you know, with them. So where there was nobody in the building. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be horrible. So, yeah. And ultimately, I guess uh, COVID kind of cost you like it cost. A lot it of did. It, it cost you. It really did. 
Yeah, I think it did. And, you know, I don't know if it would have been a year contract or, you know, it, it may not have been, it may not even have got one. But, you know, it was an honor for them to even, you know, even ask me to do it with, because there's so much talent there. I mean, those guys are so talented. They're young and, 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 and wide open. And, and there's so many there. You know, I, I don't know how these guys do it because it's just like back in the day when I was taking those guys and, and we were all working and getting paid, but those guys that were, were, I guess, under contract were sitting around not getting paid. You know, yeah. there's so many guys sitting around. You know, they do a TV show and they need 30 guys, but they're 60 on the, you know, 60 there. You know, yeah, and and, and thirty are not working, so they figured out, hey, this is a financial thing, and you know, I worked for the NWA, did an NWA show, and it was the same situation. Loved it, love went there. They took mm-hmm. care of me, treated me like a million dollars, paid me great, mm-hmm. but there was there was mm-hmm. probably twenty five guys sitting around that weren't working, you know. Yeah. So, of course, that's not my, that's the, I, that's the financial thing to them. That's not anything to me, and, and if that's what they do, that's what they do. But yeah, yeah. I guess they figured out, you know, hey, if we got these guys sitting here, they need to be working if we're going to pay them, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, like, in the territories, obviously, there's you're in the car a lot, man, doing those six days a week. Oh, yeah. The Memphis Territory, I know, we, I think it was average, like, 2,000 miles a week or something like that. Oh, it was wild, so yeah. a lot of car time and a lot of time to do, you know, we didn't have phones, we didn't have all that, so you, you take up your time ribbing each other. So, you got yeah. the ribs that, have, that you've seen or been done to you or vice versa? Not a whole lot on that kind of thing. Probably the most interesting thing that ever happened, uh, it, go back to the Memphis area. The first time I ever went to Memphis, uh, you know, uh, I, I've been doing, I've probably been full time for maybe six or eight months. I don't know, whatever the case was working on the Birmingham in most of the time. And, and, uh, Jerry Jarrett, uh, uh, and, and Nick Goulas were still together. And, uh, so they asked me and my partner to come to Memphis and, you know, mid I don't know if you, well, if you've ever worked at the mid South Coliseum when it was there, oh, but, uh, uh it was packed every Monday. <laughs> oh, it was packed every Monday. So I go and, and this first time ever, they've got a 30, Two man, two ring battle royal. Never even heard of a two ring battle royal, but this is the first yeah. time. It, it was seventy, probably seventy four, maybe early seventy five. And you, know, they got uh, Bobo Brazil, they got Earl Maynard, they got uh, I mean uh, Lou Thez, they got Jerry Lawler. So me and my protecting partner, you know, we're humble. We're sitting in the very back of the, the room. Jerry Jarrett's in there telling, "Hey, this is what's happening." So on. So it says in the ring one. Hey, everybody starts in ring one, you know. And he says, uh, Every, left in ring one, I want Jerry Lawler and Lou Thayas. I thought, wow, that's good. That's two world champions, you know. And then uh, mm. he said, in ring two, I want left Tommy Gilbert and Mike Jackson. And that's where everybody said, who? who, is, who? He goes, I, and I told my partner, I said, did he say my name? So to make it funny, <laughs> to, to, the funny part of it is, you've got to see there's 32 guys in there. So it gets down to me and Tommy Gilbert, and there's one other guy in the ring, and I look over there to it. It's my tag team partner. He never got out. You know, <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, you know, it, 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 he was so excited about being there. It, you could have thrown him out of there. You couldn't have thrown him out of there with a tow truck. You know, he was going to stay. <laughs> and so I looked at Tommy, and I, I, you know, I looked at Tommy Gilbert, and I said, Tommy, I, I'm sorry, Ben. I don't know what this. he said. He figured out something to eliminate him, and he eliminated him over the top rope. Hit his kidney, yeah. ruptured his kidneys, and he was out for about six oh my weeks. <laughs> so, oh my so, so, so me, me and Tommy Gilbert come back the next the next Monday night. The main event seventeen thousand. I think they turned away about you know three thousand, not because of me, but because of Lawler and Thez and Tommy Gilbert yeah. and them. But uh, they turned out, and, and I, uh, me and, and uh, uh, Tommy Gilbert against Lou Thez and uh, uh, Jerry Lawler in the main event. So you know, uh, yeah. good things happen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's crazy. He, yeah, I can see people getting that excited, and you just forget out there sometimes. Yeah, yeah, he he wasn't getting out of the ring. I, he was going to stay to the bitter end, but he should have been a lot earlier than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> usually you get in a battle royal, and everybody's competing to see who goes out first. Yeah. Exactly. If you're not winning it, why stay? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a quick time out and get a word from one of my dope ass sponsors, and we'll be right back with more Live and in Color with Wolfie D. Hey. 
this is Nick from Crappens Corner, and I'm here to tell you about an amazing event that's happening on Saturday, April 20th in Orlando. That event is called Glory Days, and it takes place at the Rosen Center, which is right off International Drive. The Rosen Center has an assortment of restaurants, and on April 20th, it will hold dozens of international wrestling stars for what should be an unforgettable day. The lineup includes Ron Simmons, Stan Hansen, Larry Zabisco, Kimberly Page, Matt Riddle, Devon Dudley, and many others. One of the featured events at Glory Days is a world-class championship wrestling panel that will feature discussion on the Von Erics, the Iron Claw movie, the Sportorium, and so much more by the people that lived it, including the one-man gang, Al Perez, Missy Hyatt, and more. Tickets are available now, and they are as low as $30. Head on over to Eventbrite and type in Glory Days. Hope to see everyone in Orlando for Glory Days on April 20th. So, you know, and, and I know you're Christian, and I know superstitions aren't necessarily something that we believe in, but when it comes down to it, do you have any rituals or, or superstitions or anything for pre-match that have kind of aided you in such a long career? And it may be, maybe superstition is not the correct term, but what, what do I, you do to prepare, you know, for a match? Well, I understand what you're saying. And, you know, I am a Christian. God's been good to me, and I really believe that the only reason I'm still doing this is 74, and I'm getting better bookings now than I did when I was 24. But yeah. I think God's got a hand in it. And, and one thing I always do is is I run some shows. I, I book some shows for some guys, and I run a lot of fundraisers around here, uh, you know, to build school. But I always have prayer with the guys in the, in the room. And, you know, if, even if you don't believe in it or not, it, it, it's nothing can hurt you. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I do that. And whoever I'm working with, uh, I always want to have a prayer with those guys because, you know, I know, Wolf, you've been injured several times, and, and I've had some pretty yeah. good injuries over the year. And, uh, you know, you just ask God for protection, just like in a football game. You know, you, you don't have to yeah. – I'm sure there's somebody there that's an atheist or whatever they call themselves. But, you know, if you ask God to protect uh, guys on the field, it can't hurt. It's my right. book. So yeah, right. I do that and, and, you know, do that kind of thing and just uh, – Try to conduct myself as 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 a as as good a person, not only as a Christian, but as a, just a, a decent human being. You know, there, there's a lot of guys in this business that are not too good of people, and you know, I, yeah. I try to be one of the good guys. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you definitely. Yeah. But God has blessed me. There's no doubt. Yeah, I think I think it's widely known that you're one of the good guys. I, I guess what I meant, and and I maybe I could have said it better. You said a great answer there, and I appreciate that. But is there something that you do physically, like stretch? Do you do anything specifically that have kind of kept you in the game this long, other than just being blessed by God? And that is no, yeah. you know, small thing. I'm I'm saying, what, right. is there certain I, things you do, like stretch or anything like that? That well. I, I go every day to the gym. I work out. I can't do any heavy weights because I got bad shoulders. I was supposed to have had surgery a couple of times. I did go, but I do light weights and more reps, but I go at least two hours a day in the okay. gym, sometimes two and a half. And then, uh, even on the days I, I, I have a show, I still go, maybe I do a light day, but I go work out. I do a lot of cardio. I yeah. do a lot of, uh, bicycle and, uh, treadmill and, you know, just to keep my wind and it, it cause as y'all well know, there's a thing, there's a term in this bit is called blowing up somebody or getting blown up. Yeah. And, uh, right. and, and I, I don't blow up. I, I make sure <laughs> that my legs are in good shape. And, you know, I, I work with young guys all the time and I can, I can hear them huffing. They say, you okay? You okay? I said, I ain't even, I ain't even broke a switch yet. Were you okay? You're the one huffing and puffing. Yeah. I'm not even breathing hard, you know, but, but, you know, in ring, in ring shape to me, it's a whole lot different than going out and say, well, yeah, I can run two miles. You know, I mean, Absolutely. It, it, because you're talking, you're talking a 16 foot square or an 18 foot square minus two or three square by the rope. So you're talking 15 minutes of nonstop. You know, I can't, I can't get over with the people or, or, or with the promoter. If I go out there and hold a headlock for 10 minutes, that don't work for me. I've got to be moving and doing stuff that, yeah. you know, I try to pride myself on doing stuff that everybody else is not doing. First thing I tell guys, I don't want to do what everything else is doing. One tackle, drop down, hip toss, boom. They do that four times in, in the first four matches, you know. So <laughs> yeah. I try to tell those guys, you know, here's here's something I do that, that everybody don't do. This is a Mexican hit, hit, or a Mexican arm drag, Japanese arm drag, you know, two tackles cover yeah. instead of one tackle. Yeah, I try to do stuff that yeah. – and, and and I pride myself. I tell those guys, whoever I'm working with, especially if we go to TV or something, I want to have the best match on this card. 
So, you know, if, yeah. and I tell guys that, that work for me, if you're not out here to have the best match, what are you out here for? You know, I want you to make I it hear. hard for me. I hate for guys to come up. I've had guys all my life come up to me and say, hey, don't do all that stuff out there in the, in the first couple of matches. So I'm basically hard for us. Then I'm thinking, well, if it's hard for you, then I need to be making main event money and you need to be able to show up. You know, <laughs> I, I'm going to go out there. I want to get my cell phone. I want people to look, get on the internet when they start talking. And that internet's a pretty, pretty tough thing sometimes. I want them to say, hey, that, that, that old man had the best match on the card. Man, he, he outdid those, the other guys. And that's my goal. Yeah. Whenever, if you guys book me in Kentucky tomorrow, I want to have the best match on the card, you know? Yeah. 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 Sure. Uh, do you, uh, I assume you do. You train guys? And, and, and if so, like, who are some of the people that you've trained that, that the people would know? Yeah, I've trained a lot of guys. I don't know if you uh, you uh, would know too many of them, but uh, I trained. Uh, well, m- most of them were local guys around in this area. Uh, uh-huh. the, the the thing that I've probably done better is is is, is just kind of after guys are trained. Just it, it's guys. Tra- Here's a problem in our business today. Everybody, everybody. We don't have any fans anymore. Everybody's a wrestler now. Everybody's mm, yeah. got, you know, you know, comes out with a pair of gym shorts and tennis shoes. Now they're a wrestler. I, I go to these shows and I see these guys that are in a, on a front row paying ten dollars, twenty dollars a ticket, screaming, hollering, having a good time. I go back three weeks later, they're in the dressing room. Now they're the manager, the referee, <laughs> you know, or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 but what I what I've done, been able to do to help more guys is get guys full time jobs like you know, like a Pat Rose or or a Jeff uh, Young or some of these guys that you know, Bill Watts would call me and say, you know, man, we got an opening spot here you got a guy that, that maybe you could, could, could come work for us for a few months and yeah i'd say hey well yeah i got del Vizi, i got bob brown you know these guys would go and make good money and do good stuff so i've trained a lot of guys uh i helped big boss man give you his first job i mean i didn't train him ted allen trained him but yeah. he came he was he was working for me and and, and dusty called me and uh, uh, i think yeah, it was dusty called me and said look can you get this guy to come over and next thing i know he's big bubba jim Cordes bodyguard and then these big boss man in wwe so I've helped a lot of guys get a good a position, whereas I've not <clears> trained <throat> anybody that ever went, you know, big time and, and, you know, went to the, to the very top or anything, but I have yeah. trained a lot of guys so, that have done good. So you really have, uh, I mean, you keep saying all, okay, Oli called me and Bill Watts called me. I mean, you were connected with a lot of yes. name promoters and things. And so, you know, you, you say job guy, some people, you know, enhancement, uh, but and then there's there, there's Carpenter, you know, so you're yep. kind of like the the foreman of the Carpenters, and then <laughs> yeah. you know that's yeah. that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I just organized it up, you know. Uh, as like I said, back when we the contracts and all, guys would need guys for TV. We do Shreveport TV twice a month. We would fly. I mean, Dusty would fly us to Florida to do Florida Championship Wrestling twice a month. And Atlanta was every Saturday, Sunday. Uh, 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 Bill Watts. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Blackjack Lonza. They would call, and we would go to Canada. We'd go to Las Vegas. I mean, we had a heck of a run. I mean, for about, yeah. I guess, maybe eight or ten years. You know, I had kind of a job guy, job guy market kind of. And, and the good thing was, guys would JJ Dillon. Those guys, when people would call, they say, "Look, if you want to work on TV, call Mike Jackson." So, it, it, but it made it easy for them. If you see, I mean, Terry Garvin was my connection with WWF when I went to WWF in in ninety uh, eight. Uh, or I'm sorry, 88 to 92, and they would just call, and, and it was easy for them because instead of them having to make 15 different phone calls, they'd make m- my call and say, hey, I need right. 15 guys in St. Louis tomorrow. And, you know, that, right. I'd go rent the bands, uh, you know, I'd get the hotel reservoir, I'd do all the work, put the guys on the band, boom, we'd go do it, yeah. come back home. He didn't have to worry about anything. They thanked me so many times for, hey, you making this so easy for us, you know. Yeah, and and sure. I, I had a crew of guys that, that I could depend on. I mean, if they said it's going to be there at five o'clock, they were there at five o'clock. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So it worked out good for me. You know, I, yeah, I, that's I, a good gig to have. <laughs> yeah, a- absolutely. I, Cause they needed it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, they did. Good yeah. Deal. So, I live in Mooresville, North Carolina, and the, all the things that you're saying to me sounds like a gentleman who uh, honestly put Mooresville on the map as far as wrestling. Do you know who mm-hmm. I'm about to say? In Mooresville, I don't know that. I don't know that. No. Nelson Nelson Royal. I know you. Know yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, how, I do. Hey. How, yeah. How was it working, Nelson, and 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 talking and meeting? You know what? I never worked with Nelson Royal. He was a World Junior Champion. I did some World Junior Championship matches with like Denny Brown and different people. But yeah. uh, Nelson was a little bit older than I was, I think, okay. in in the okay. time. And he so. had a school though. 
and he yeah. trades some of the best. You know, I think he, Tommy Angel, and some of those guys came out of that school, Isley. maybe George yep. South. Yep. Yeah. Mike, yep. Yep. Yeah, but uh, but uh, Nelson Roy was a very highly respected. Uh, I did I, I was on some shows with him and, and didn't meet him, and uh, you know it was an honor for me to meet him. You know, I, uh, those guys like that were you know they they set the groundwork for me, so I was you know excited about meeting those guys. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's just surprising because I know you were a junior champion forever, and I know Nelson was a junior champion forever. Yeah, it's kind of surprising y'all never worked. So it, it was never. I never did. did. I did a lot of junior heavyweight matches for, but, but never with him. You know, I don't know why. I don't know yeah. why it never came up. I worked with just about everybody in the world, I guess, but him. Yeah, you know Tommy Angel's a good friend of mine, actually. And yeah, Tommy. Tommy's a great guy. David Isley, another one. George yep. South. I know David. Know. Wolfie and I both love George South to death. You know what's funny is we recently just saw, <laughs> uh, we recently just had Al Perez on the show when we were yeah, talking I know about Al. Wolfie and him both doing the whirly bird move. You you know the helicopter uh-huh. where he does mm-hmm. that spin. Well, Wolfie took that move over, and I guess have you seen anybody attempt the move that you do the walk around the ring? Have you seen anyone else attempt that? Uh, I've worked with a couple of guys. Who did that? Uh, there's a there's a guy that worked for GCW that does Las, has a show in Las Vegas called Santana Jackson. I don't know if you know who that is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the yeah. Michael Jackson. Yeah, he does a yeah Michael Jackson impersonation. I worked with him at Wrestlecade in, in uh, Winston Salem the other day, and and he does a little bit of that. And there's a few guys I guess that do it. I've never seen anybody on the show that does it. Maybe out of respect for me. Sure. But sure. you know if they you know if they do more power to them. You know I mean. I, Everybody's got, you know, their 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 so-called patent move. I guess they have, and you know, there's not a whole lot of moves left that somebody's not doing. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah. When did when did you officially start doing that move? Gosh, <laughs> I would say probably the eighties. Probably one day I just got up there and did it, <laughs> and yeah, it okay. worked out. Yeah, it looks good if you don't fall off. Sure. <laughs> yeah, if you don't fall off the ring, and sometimes I have fallen off, so it looks real good if you don't fall. That. Have you ever fallen? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> looks good. Luckily, you can hopefully you can hit the apron and just uh, like you're snapping the guys on the, on the top rope if you're lucky. So you make it look good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, recently Wolfie brought up uh, on a previous show that that Bill Dundee was a uh, high what is it a tightrope walker? He's a tightrope walker. Yeah. yeah, Bill, did yeah, he ever comment walker. on your your move? I'm I'm curious because that's very tightrope. You walk. know, I wasn't around Bill a whole lot now. Like I said, I was in Florence, Alabama, the fir- working for Southeastern Continental the first time he came to the states, and uh, he was pretty much him and Jerry got to be, I guess, pretty good buddies, and they stayed on that Memphis end most of the time, and we split up. I didn't see Bill too much after that, but uh, you know, I respect Bill. I mean, what I did know of Bill, he was a great guy. Uh, you know, he he made a, you know, and you got to give him credit. He was not the biggest guy in the world, but he wrestled no. the biggest names in the world. You know, Amen. Yeah. He, yeah. he, he, uh, he made a good run for himself. And, you know, I, I understand, I saw him at, a, at a, a couple of fan fests and talked to him a little while, but you know, he's always had my respect and anybody can make it to the, to the spot that he made it. Hey, more power to him. He did something right. Yeah. yeah he's he not did. the biggest guy in the world, but nobody ever told him that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, and he, he worked with the biggest guys in the world and, and mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and they sold for him and right. he, he knew what right. he was doing. Exactly. Yeah, he was he was yeah. good. He was good at what he did, and you know it. it you don't even have to be the greatest in the world. You know, Austin Idol's a personal friend of mine. He he and I do a lot of stuff still together. Did, we did a signing over in Plasky, Tennessee the other day together. Yeah, uh, and uh, the you know, buddy, hey, Todd Camp. It, yeah, K Face. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, we did. I've done a couple for those guys, and you know, he he would tell you he's probably not the greatest wrestler in the world, but, but he could. He he had charisma that people would either love to see him or hate to see him. I mean, either one of the two, he put people in the seats. You know, yeah. I've known I've worked with a lot of guys over the years that I thought, man, these guys are not very good, but they put people in the seats. You know, yeah. and uh, not not yeah. saying that about Idol because he was great, right. but he right. was one of the top baby faces here in this area. But uh, you know, there's a lot of guys I've seen over the years that I didn't think were all that good, but man, they 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 had that charisma. They they knew how to put people in the seats, and that's all the promoters cared about. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was your very exactly. first match, actually, Mike? Well, I got in the business. I've been in. I've been wrestling fifty-five years, 
But yeah. I got in the business when I was probably about 18 and uh, putting up rings and, and doing things like that. But the first match I had was in June of 1972 with a guy. It was an outlaw show. His name was, I think it was the Blue Air Inferno or the Blue Demon or the Blue something. I, I don't know exactly what he was, but his okay. name was Homer Galloway. I know I remember his name was Homer Galloway. Uh, and, and it was probably, in, I think it was in uh, Winfield, Alabama. And it was probably in front of maybe, uh, probably 20 people. Okay. <laughs> you know, okay. back in those days. Yeah. 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 But that's been a long time ago. I've had several after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the first training session that I ever had uh, was with uh, Gypsy Joe when I was. Oh, there. God. Your work. Oh, <laughs> yes, I had. Toughest <laughs> man I've ever met in my entire life. Now, they can talk about all these guys nowadays, but Gypsy Joe and Don Fargo were the toughest two men I ever saw in my entire life. <clears throat> yeah. Gypsy Joe and, and those guys were beating each other with belts. And, and, and when all these other guys are thinking about these lumberjack matches and strap matches and all, but these guys were beating each other with leather straps, not belts, but, uh, weightlifters yeah. belts and stuff. I mean, and, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about hitting the mat and then acting like oh, you hit them on the back. I'm talking about hitting them on the back, you know, it, the toughest and, you guys know, I ever saw. <clears throat> Joe wrestled, uh, up until, you know, somewhere around your age. Yep. I know that for sure. Yep. And, yep. uh, I mean, that's when I think of guys that wrestled that long, I think you and him got to be like top two or the only two that I can think of. Yeah. that. Yeah. He, he was great. I, I, I had some ma- matches with him over the years and, you know, he, he was, uh, he could do, you know, flying head. And a lot of guys can't do a lot of these things. I mean, a lot of guys can't, but he could do those flying head scissors with you and all kind of good stuff. Yeah. He was, he had several uh, it, different things. In my first training session with him, that's what he taught me to do a flying head scissors and uh, yep, yep, <laughs> had me do it to yep. him a few times. And he was actually my, he was like the third match I ever had in front of people was against him. And, you know, people were, uh, and I was intimidated as hell, even though I had trained with him, but I was still intimidated because we were in front of people yep. and I knew about the chops and all that, you know, not one time did he chop me in that whole match, man. He, he, he took <laughs> care of me and, uh, yep. he, he loved my mama to death, man. So I think that's why yep. my mama's <laughs> thank goodness. Cause he was tough. I, you can run over him with a truck and you couldn't hurt him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how tough he was. We talked about this. Have you seen the thing with uh, him and New Jack? Did you see that with Gypsy Joe and New Jack? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. I, I, no, okay. I never did. Now I, I was on a few shows with New Jack. And, and, and yeah. but I didn't know, I hadn't seen the gypsy. Well, of course I know he passed away, but I hadn't, I didn't yeah. see him probably for the last, I don't know how many years and never saw him. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I think this was in I the did. early two thousands. Uh, they, they, uh, uh Jack kind of took some, some liberties with Joe and really put it to him with bats and all this kind of stuff. And Joe took it and we're talking Joe's, you know, at, uh, close to the end of his life there. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. took care of a bit of it. And, uh, you know, we talked about it and I, you know, and I respect both of them, whatever, uh, new Jack, uh, I knew him, but that lot of stuff he did was uncalled for. And that was one of them, but, uh, yeah. You know, he he uh, he beat Joe pretty hard, but Joe got up, walked away. I'll say that. And, and you know, his age, if you saw another man get beat like that, they'd be in the hospital. I promise you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, him and Donnie Fargo were the two toughest guys. I don't know if you remember Don Fargo, Jackie Fargo's so-called yeah. brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah. I saw him in Montgomery one time. I never saw anybody do this in, in all my years of life. But he got his, he got his eye split open in a match. And, uh. He stood in front of a beer and I was watching him. I thought, you know, I'm sitting there in the dressing room and he, he pulls out this needle and thread and sewed up his own eye and with no, no <laughs> anesthesia and all that. Fargo. Fargo. Fargo did I mean, I sit right yeah. there. I saw him sit there and do that. He had his own needle. He had his own thread. He sewed his own eye up and I thought, my gosh, and never, never flinched. I'd have been wow. crying. Wow. So I'd have, yeah. Yeah. Oh. He came in, uh, oh, wow. I was working at NWA saw for TJ Weatherby. That's actually where I met Wolfie D back in Nashville. And <laughs> he came in one night, he had a kid that I guess he was training or bringing in and it was working for him. And Don came in with him and I just was like enamored by Don. I just was like, man, I don't oh, yeah. care who the toughest guy was in here before Don walked in, but Don yeah. is now the toughest guy in the building. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. He, 
Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. You know, one guy I thought of that may be right there with you as far as active and and one of the elder statesmen of the business is Chick Donovan, too. I think Chick's. Yeah, I see Chick. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Chick's two years older than I am. Okay. And uh, he still wrestled, not as much. I don't think he does. Maybe, I don't know exactly what his schedule is, but it's not as as, uh, as hectic as mine is. But yeah. I know it, he does. We, we're doing a uh, fan fest in in uh, uh, Rock for Rocket City Championship Wrestling on May 18th together over in uh, Hazel Green, Alabama, right outside of Huntsville. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'll say I'll say Chick again, and I know he's working some up in Georgia. He lives in Georgia. I know he's still working some. Uh, it still looks great. Yeah, yeah, I'm jealous. He's got a head full of hair. He's still got yeah. a head full of hair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, head full. Yeah, I don't. Hey, and and. And, and and right here we can we'll we'll cut this part out right here. But if you got you, you got like your booking book in front of you, that's got your dates because this episode is going to drop on Monday, which is what Jimmy? What day is that? The twenty fifth. The twenty fifth. No, so anything no, no, yeah, that you 25th. got coming up after the twenty fifth, you can plug it right now. Any what? Any any upcoming bookings that are after the twenty fifth? Because this episode is going to drop on Monday, the twenty fifth next this coming Monday. Oh, okay. So anything okay. that you got after that that you want to talk about, go ahead and start rolling with it. Plug everywhere you're going to be uh, after Monday. Well, uh, it, how far how far would Hardy Arkansas be from Memphis? You ever heard of Hardy Arkansas? Oh, Hardy. Yeah, H A R D Y. I'm booked there April the sixth okay. for a group. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but and, I, and this, I know. I, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I got to go through Memphis to get there. I, I know it's past Memphis, but I thought maybe that might be an area that y'all were familiar with. I, I'm not. I know I'm there. April. I the guarantee 6th. You I've been there. I guarantee you I've been there. <laughs> Just can't think of it off the top well, of my head. Yeah, well, let's, let's, used to run let's, all the towns. <laughs> yeah, let, let's bring it back in and say, Wolfie, uh, bring it in better and say, like, hey, so okay. you know, as we're wrapping up the show, where do you have in the, in coming up? Did you see the text yeah. I sent you though? I didn't know if you. Um, you sent the text. Um, okay. <sighs> yeah. All right. So um, I'll, I'll I'll say that better in just a second. But um, the last question that I personally want to ask because I've seen this. Um, like when we did Slam Anniversary, the one that you and I were on, I kind of felt yeah. it there. And then also, uh, I was I was on Ric Flair's last match, and it was a, was a producer as well as a talent. And I noticed these things, and I see it on social media. Do you feel like? And I know that it's kind of always been that way, but I feel like it's a little bit different these days. Of a little bit of a rift between uh, the the older guys. And the younger guys, you know, it's like the younger guys, like I used to want to listen to the veterans. I might not agree with some of it, but I'd go with it just out of respect. I feel like it's different now. What's your opinion? Well, uh, I've been well respected. I mean, when I go to these shows, I do a lot of shows for a lot of different people. And I'll go to places that I don't know any of these guys, but they'll, you know, they'll know who, who I am. And and they yeah. and they will ask me, you know, I, you know, what do we need to do? What do I need to do? I do a lot of seminars now. If you know what I'm talking about, with guys yeah. before shows, yeah. and uh, yeah. you know, what I try to teach them is is more about the psychological part of the stuff that I do. The uh, you know, they're already trained. I mean, there's nothing I can go in and say this is what you need to do because they're going to do pretty much what they they're going to do. They're already trained by yeah. somebody. But what I try to do is teach them the mental part of this thing, which is an important part that people don't understand. But, you know, I, 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 there is probably a, a, a gap there, like you're talking about. But I, I have been well-respected everywhere I go. And people have come up and, you know, talked to me. The, the wrestlers, hey, I saw this. I, I remember when you did this. And I just want to tell you thanks mm-hmm. for paving the way for me and stuff like that. So it makes me feel real good. I, I've not ever had – now, there's been a couple of times when I'd go to a show and a guy would come up to me and say, hey, this is what I'm going to do tonight. And I'd say, oh, okay. You know, I, I, I'm from the old school. But then I get in the ring and then uh, he'll come back. We didn't do that. I said, oh, I forgot. You know, I, you know, don't tell <laughs> yeah. me what you're going to do. I mean, don't, I mean, first of all, there's certain right. things that I don't do anymore. And, uh, you know, I'm, right. I'm not, yeah, I'll have these young guys come up and say, well, you know, I, I like to do that tombstone pile driver. I said, well, do it on him. <laughs> you <laughs> know, practice it on that guy over there. Cause my neck is yeah. 74 years old. His neck is 24 years old, you know, or I'm going to do right. you a belly to back suplex just because Brock Lesnar can do it. Or Kurt Angle can do it. Don't mean you can do it. 
you know, right. So, yes, but, but exactly. 90, 99% of the guys are very respectful. And, and you know, I work, I, I, I went to, uh, Los Angeles the other day from, from Game Changer, which I told you I love working for Brett Lauderdale. That's a great group. But he flew me to Los Angeles and I worked with Kerry Morton, you know, Ricky's boy. Yeah. And, right. Uh, and so respectful. You know, I, I never worked with him before. I met him at, at, at a couple of shows with Ricky. R- Ricky and I go back a lot. We had a lot of great matches together. But, you know, he was so respectful. He sat down. He said, Would you please mind if I, and, but everything he wanted to do, was me doing something to him. So I thought, man, this is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll just listen to you. But, uh, I mean, I, he was so respectful and Mr. Jackson, can I do this? Yes, sir. And you know, I, I don't necessarily want the yes, sirs and the Mr. Jackson's, but that makes me feel old. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but the, but the fact that he, he didn't sit down and, and say, look, here I am. I'm the champion over here and I want to do this, that, and the other. And I have some people do that to me, but you know, if they do that, I never forget that. And then when I go out there and we don't have the best match on the card after all because i'm not going to do all the stuff that they said and uh, uh yeah. but you know i, 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 I don't want to i don't have yeah <laughs> i, I don't want to call everything <laughs> yeah yeah i don't expect <laughs> them to listen to me on everything but what i expect them to do is just let's put our let's put our strengths together and have a good match out of this thing you know if if i say, say can can you can i close line you backwards over the top rope and i say well i've never done that then we're not going to do it you know you know, I don't want them to do that in a match. I want to go out there and I'll say, "Hey, can you if, do you drop kick?" Yeah, that's about. I do that better than anything. Well, hey, let's get a drop kick in there. You know, we want to try to make this thing, you know, good for both sides. But now we're going to try anything stupid that we don't do. You know, I, if the Undertaker said, "You know, I'm going to give you a tombstone pile driver," I'd probably say, "Yes, sir." <laughs> but you know, yeah. if, if 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 Joe Blow says it, that I ain't never seen him nowhere in my life, and and he looks like, and he weighs a, 125 pounds, and he's gonna pick me up and drop me on my head now, that probably ain't <laughs> yeah. gonna work. Yeah, <laughs> right. I've I've heard guys, uh, veteran guys. I don't remember who it was, but sitting in the dressing room one time, and some kids, yeah, yeah, I do this uh, the thing off the top rope with the flip, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. and they were like, uh, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. And he's like, really, we we're gonna do it? He goes. Yeah, I'll move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. I, you know, I'll tell you a guy that I've learned a lot from. I, I've been running w- running around with and doing shows with Johnny Swinger. I don't know if you know who that is. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. he is, he has really helped me. Now, he's been in the business a lot less years than I have. But he's taught me, you know, sometimes less is more. You know, I, the guys don't understand that sometimes, you know. But sometimes mm-hmm. yeah, less talking and less work, less doing this, less doing that. It's, it really gets over better and, and, you know, and more. So he's taught me a lot of stuff. So, you know, yeah. I mean, even you're never too old to learn. Right. Right. Yes. And I said that was the last question, but I forgot I had one more. So I like it on my apologies. Uh, I do no. want to talk about, and, and, and my memory may not, I'm not the greatest wrestling historian. Okay. I just have memories from my childhood is what it is. Yeah. The, the things that I watched and the match with you and Ric Flair on TBS. Did, did y'all go a, a 60 minute on TV once or something? We didn't do 60 y'all, minutes, y'all. but, but we, yeah, we, we go ahead. I just remember as a child, like you were about to beat him. I feel like this match went on forever and you were about to beat him. And I remember, well, go Mike Jackson, go Mike Jackson. <laughs> hey, you know what? I thought I was going to beat him. Yeah. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but you know, I've never put, I had never put anybody in a figure four in my life. Didn't even know how to yeah. do it. But, <laughs> but we were, we were the sick match. The sick razor company used to sponsor a match. In 1988 uh-huh. is when you're talking about. Yes. It was one of the greatest matches I ever had. Helped me out a lot. And uh, he picked me to work with. And uh, uh-huh. we went out there, and, and, and I never opened my mouth. You know, he's Ric Flair. He's the legitimate. Right. Well, I mean, now there's 25 world champions, and i got to ask myself, how many worlds do we have? You know, right, right. but there's, he, he was the only, he was the NWA world champion that wrestled, you know, for the world championship and all over the world. Right. And I ain't opening my mouth. I'm not going to say a word, you know, but he, uh, right, right. he put me over like a million dollars. I, 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 I yeah. knocked him. One time I hit him with just a punch and he went flying backwards over the top. I thought I killed a world champion. They're going to kill me when I get back. <laughs> that destiny. And I put the figure four on him and the match was probably, you know, a TV match, five or six minutes, but it went on, Are you but serious? They just, it was so good. They just let it go. Yeah. And yeah. they cut something out of some other segment, you know, and it was probably, I bet you, we went probably 10 or 12 and, uh, and he finally put the figure four on me, but I put it on him and, That's crazy. you know, he, he got to the ropes and got broke. And 
I, I just, I just listened. I mean, I, I never opened my mouth. I said one time when he said, put a figure four on him, I thought, I said, do what? <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> I thought, I thought something ain't right here, but you know, he, he did it and, and stuck me into it and then put me into it. And he, I got it on him and he's screaming and finally gets to the ropes and breaks it up. And man, it, it was a claim to fame for me. It helped me. It got me some good books. Oh, man. No doubt. Well, well no that's doubt. what I'm saying, though. Just my memory as a kid. It's crazy how you remember things. And I right. I do right. remember the excitement of it, of, you know, yeah. actually thinking that you were going to beat him. And and then in my mind, I swear, I, for all these years, I've been like, yeah, Mike Jackson, I think, went like a time limit draw or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> With, you know, Mike that's Jackson on TV. <laughs> That's the way a match ought to be. I mean, he, he was smart enough. Some of these guys get in there. You know, I, I've done my share of squash matches, I guess, in, in the years. But what what does that do? You beat up a wash rag. You beat up nothing. Exactly. You know, if a guy can't yeah. fight you back, why would they ever put him out there to start with? You know, right. that's like yeah. a, a bullfighter. You know, and it, and it was, I went to a bullfight one time, and they'd already stabbed the bull 412 times. He was bleeding to death before he ever came out there. He couldn't hardly walk. You know, so what, <laughs> what did right. the matter door beat? Right. You know, it, yeah. it, you know, Flair always, it, if it was with George South or Tommy Angel, he would go out there and, and make a match out of it. And, and then I guess the people would say, well, you know, just like what you said, you know, God, Mike Jackson almost beat Ric Flair. But yeah. but it, it don't matter. It doesn't matter who wins the, up the battle, who won the war. Ric Flair has hands yeah. in the air, yeah. you know. Right. And guys don't think that those guys go out there and say, well, I, you know, I'm on, I'm at the Omni next week in the main event. So I got to kill you out there on TV. And I'm thinking, well, what did you kill? <laughs> you beat up a dead body. And it goes back to what you said about, <laughs> uh, you know, teaching, helping people with their psychology and everything. Exactly. And, uh, I, I, this thing I got from Bill Dundee, as a matter of fact, he used to say, you could teach a monkey to do flips, but you can't teach them when and why. So and that yep, makes yep, so yep. much sense, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, these guys don't understand that. I, I, I was on a, I was on a show with on an outlaw show, and there was a guy. I don't want to even say his name because I don't even know if I remember his name. I was listening to him tell all these guys <clears throat> all this stuff, and he couldn't play dead in a cowboy movie. And he's trying to tell all these guys what to do and what not to do. And you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm thinking, you you, you can't you, you can't lock up. You don't even know how to lock up. Yeah. And you're telling all these guys, you know, you can't sell this and you can't do that and all this. And I'm thinking, you know, you don't even need to be you need to be putting up the ring and sitting over there and watching the show and then taking the ring down and putting it in the trailer. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, some of these guys, and that's what's killing our business. I think. I mean, that's what's really hurting our business. We got too many. Yeah. We got too many. Too many uh, uh, Indians and not enough chiefs in there. You know. Yeah. 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 Well, you're not allowed to uh, stretch stretch nobody. You're not allowed to hurt nobody's feelings. Uh, you know that type of stuff. So nobody can lose anymore. You know? right, right. Yeah, right. That too. <laughs> that yeah, too. I'm glad they didn't tell me that uh, Mike, 45 years ago. <laughs> Mike, we, we want you to tell the people where you are going to be upcoming, where they can find you um, uh, at an arena near them, wherever. What do you got going on? Comic cons and all kinds of stuff. I'm sure. Well, uh, let me uh, do. Oh, this broadcast, does it go into Alabama? Oh, yeah. It goes worldwide. Okay. Yeah. All right. Worldwide. Well, yeah. Worldwide. Yeah. Well, uh, start. let's see, March uh, uh, this week, uh, we're doing Danville High School on the uh, on the Friday, and then we got Jasper, Alabama at the Swan Gym on Saturday. And uh, <clears throat> let me think, the next week, uh, we got Brilliant High School on in April, April the 5th, I think. And then we go to – I go to Hardy, Arkansas, not too far from where you guys grew up a little bit. Uh, on April the 6th. Uh, uh, and after that, I'd have to look at my book. <laughs> but we got several things coming up in Alabama. You know, I, I know we do uh, uh, we do Dora, Alabama on April the 13th. And I'm pretty busy. I, I got at least uh, pretty much every Friday and Saturday book for a pretty good while. So basically, well, good, some man. of the places you go back once a month, you know, because uh, that's when they run these towns once a month. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And uh, I'm I'm envious of your durability, um, <laughs> and, and that bump that bump card you got. You got the gold bump card. See, I, 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 started out I appreciate. With, it. I think I started out with one that didn't have much credit on it. Or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I know how you feel. <laughs> but man, Mike, it's been an absolute pleasure to have yes. you on here, and an honor. And we we totally appreciate you coming on, man. Hey, I appreciate that. And, you know, if anybody out there, any wants any Mike Jackson memorabilia, I've got a lot of stuff. And I got the DVDs, the T-shirts, and pictures and stuff. That if they ever want to call me, you're welcome to give them my phone number and they call me. And 
I just ship it right to them. I do a lot of that. A lot of people are buying okay. boots and tights and stuff nowadays, so I'd love to do that. Okay, great, man. Uh, yeah, if anybody uh, wants to uh, get in touch with Mike, just go to the Live and in Color Wolfie D uh, page on uh, YouTube or on uh, Facebook or Instagram or wherever. Get in touch with us, and we'll get you in touch with Mike. And Please. Jimmy, we will take a break, and we will come right back with Ask Wolfie D Anything. Thank you, yeah. Mike Jackson. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, brother. It's my privilege. You're the best. Appreciate Thank you. you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Truly been an honor, Thank sir. Thank you. Hey, yeah. my privilege. Thank you, buddy. All right, DJ, hit that music. All right, we are back with Ask Wolfie D Anything. And as always, y'all brought us some good questions, and we definitely appreciate that. So we've got a few good ones here. and Actually, we got a lot of good ones. <laughs> but All uh, right. We just kind of got to go through these here. So the very first one I'm going to ask you is from one of our good listeners here, Bobby Murray. And he, he says, who was under the motorcycle helmet during your Power Pro run? Uh, everybody thought it was Jamie and, yeah. uh, it turns out it was, uh, Nick nitrous. So I, I broke him into the business, uh, you know, started carrying him around with me and, uh, that the, um, the drag race car that we had, uh, was, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was a friend of, uh, Nick nitrous and also the one that was driving when we had the rollover crash. So there's that. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it was Nick nitrous. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, wow, wow, wow. It's the Nitro Snowy <laughs> segment. Yeah. I got to know Nick during our Saul run together. Yeah. And Nick was a interesting guy. Actually, the only person I know that not meaning to do it, but just by accident sounds exactly like Jamie Dundee. <laughs> yeah, man. He's you, always ever since I met him, he was like that. And then yeah. Kind of escalated a bit. Um, yeah. Yeah. He just, he just didn't want to. I thought he wanted to wrestle, but he didn't want to wrestle. He didn't want to wrestle. He just wanted. <laughs> to, he wanted all the trappings of a wrestler without doing the wrestling. Right. He just wanted to get on the mic and yeah. talk. Yeah. Well, you know it's funny. He's a different character. Yeah, he was a different character. They actually set up a feud with he and I at Saw. And uh, yeah. All right. Our very next question is from the Plastic Sheik at GMBMPW. What's up, Sheik? He says, how would Wolfie handle some of the stuff R-Truth does to try and make people laugh if he was supposed to be serious in the situation? Which, you know, we just had a question about R-Truth, and I think it's opened up the floodgates for people wanting to know more about R-Truth, which he's a want-to-know guy, you know? So what would you say? What are your ways? <laughs> to not <laughs> laugh in the ring because I'm sure Jamie's done it a million times. And oh well, see, uh, uh, I guess they get breaking characters, what everybody's calling it, right? Uh, yeah, you know, um, I mean, there's been times when the CSPG 13 is kind of okay, okay. If I laugh. right? You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and 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 not really like if it's an intense situation, major feud or whatever. Obviously. But I mean, I don't think you, I don't think I can be broken like that. I really don't. Really? But, uh, but yeah, I don't. I think I'm so into it because you put yourself into a different zone, man. You're that person. You're that character. You, you know, especially if you live the gimmick, it's, it's you, you got to believe in what you're doing out there, in my opinion. Sure. And uh, so I don't think I can be broken. I can't think of too many or any times, let me say that, I don't think, I can't think of any time where anyone's, you know, broke me in a serious situation or anything. Uh, with him, you know, it's he's trying to be funny. Uh, let's, let's say, you know, I'm Slash. I don't think you could break me. As Wolfie, it'd be okay if I laughed, I think. Uh, sure. And sure. played it off in some sort of way or, sure. I don't know. I just yeah. don't think that that's uh, not saying that the people who ha who he has broken is sending not a knock on him. I just I just don't think it would happen to me, honestly. Because I've noticed, you know, when he deals with the bloodline or something, they'll like rub their face and hide their mouth. And yeah, I've even noticed Roman Reigns. I've done stuff like <clears throat> that. I mean, that's yeah, you're kind of, but you're also letting them know that's it's funny, bro. You know what I right. mean? Right, so. right. 
Yeah. But I mean, it's funny because like, you know, Roman Reigns is doing this thing. I've noticed that he'll suck the inner parts of his cheeks in his like in his side teeth or yeah. whatever in his molar. And he'll be like biting his cheeks while he's yeah. trying not it's to a, laugh. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like uh, there was a crew on uh, and throughout the years, I guess there's been but like the the era of Jimmy Fallon and all them on Saturday yeah. Night Live. Yes, they would exactly. always fucking break character. They man. did. That was like and, a deal. Yeah. Yeah. And and I kind of didn't like it. You know, right. I'm saying? Right. There's sometimes where every now and then to get everybody laughing is funny on something like that, a comedy show, that's funny. But to do it all the time, it's like, come on, y'all. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. No, that's the, a good one. The one with, uh, I don't know the girl's name, but the one that does Debbie Downer when they were all cracking up on that, there was a particular episode yeah. where she could it together. Yeah. They were all laughing. Rachel Dratch, I think is. Her yeah. Name. Yeah. She was always, they, that was definitely their deal. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. for sure. So, yeah. All right. This one is from Ben Martin, Ben Martin, 88 on Twitter. He asked this question today. He says, you know, recently we've had Al Perez on and he loved yeah. the show. He said it was a great show today as always is what he said, talking about mm-hmm. the Al Perez show. And yeah. he, he, it brought up a question in his mind. He says, has Wolfie ever had trouble with anyone mad at him for stealing a move? No, uh, no, I, I, I respect people, you know what I'm saying? If they're on right. the show, not going right. to do their move or whatever. Um, no, I've never had that problem. And heck, I don't, other than just basic moves, I really don't think I did anything that was a steal. And, and I don't think I would have done that move. Al Perez was still active and over, sure. never taking it, you know what I right. mean? But he yeah. wasn't. Right, exactly, and and he was just he he enjoyed the the banter between you two about you still and you know his yeah. mood and him saying yeah. that and stuff. But you know, recently on the Jericho podcast, he had Dave Meltzer, and they were talking about Ole Anderson yeah. and. Two times did it come up in the show of our recent guests. He talked about Al Perez and Chris Jericho said that they were talking about the Black Scorpion and Chris Jericho said something to the effect of like, golly, why didn't they have a great worker in there instead of Al Perez? And I'm like, screw you, Jericho. Uh, Like, (laughs) yeah. And I, I may be thinking like he's talking like a great name, like a bigger name, but yeah. instead he said worker. And I don't think that I don't think Al Perez, I would almost say Al Perez is on the par with Jericho. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So for his time and everything. Right. Right. Yeah, and I, so, I don't, I probably, unless he's just an asshole, don't like him. I don't think he meant it to come out that way. Say, yeah. I'm hoping that he didn't because, but I think what he meant, because they were also using different guys in that black scorpion gimmick and mm. that, you know, so I was like, man, that was a dick move. And then just a little later, they're talking about Ollie Anderson, how he brought in the road warriors to Georgia championship wrestling. And of course our buddy, Mike Jackson came up. So yeah. very cool. Very cool, and yeah, two two names of, of recent guests in one show for the Jericho podcast. So anyway, I don't normally promote other podcasts unless it's Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, but today I thought it was funny to talk about that. So anyway, yeah. thank you all. I don't have anything else, Wolf. <laughs> I got nothing else, Wolf. All yeah, right. I got nothing well, else. Again, y'all, uh, um, the superstar buddies are in. Uh, find me on here. Find me wherever, you know, uh, all the places you can find me. So uh, if you want one or two or ten, yeah, uh, catch up with me, uh, $20 a piece. Uh, I've also got some T-shirts I'll sell for 10 bucks a piece. Nice. Check online for those, too. And uh, I might even work out a deal if you buy, you know, two or more wrestling buddies, you know, maybe a free shirt or something. So I'm always willing to work with uh, the listeners and the fans. So I appreciate you guys. And next week, uh, I'm not sure who we got yet, as usual, but uh, surely it'll be something good for you. Oh, yeah. So tune in next week to Live in Color, Wolfie D, and Jimmy Across the Street. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, the podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics 
to superstar interviews to action figure expertise. This team does it all, and all they ask is, Give me back my pro wrestling! Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. Join me, Gene Jackson, for the Jackson Interaction Podcast, where I'll be doing one-on-one interviews with people from the world of professional wrestling, as well as stand-up comedy. You can get them anywhere podcasts are available in both video and audio form, but you can find them all at GeneJacksonPod.com. That's right, it's the talk of Middle Tennessee, the channel you love to hate and the channel you hate to love. It's Brian Turner from Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. And if you're looking for matches from Wolfie D to Jerry Lawler to Dusty Rhodes and the team that put a pimp before your eyes and a goatee between your thighs, Booty Call and Athena, go to LostWrestling.com. See, I made it easy for you. Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. Booyah! So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, my personal page is Warren Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, at Live Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autographed photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages, and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right, Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie D. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate First of all, the work you've done for this podcast. You have worked your butt off. Secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more, is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, and remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon. And our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cap for you, don't. He got a cap for you, don't. I got a cap for you, don't. He got a cap for you, don't. He got a cap for you, don't. And here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging, don't be hating, cause I'm spitting the truth. Still lobbing in color. Don't rush your mother. Utilize a hubcap. I'm like any other. Back in the day, I was NOD. And I was P to the G plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times. Title suckers taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping wrestling's first white boy coming out hip hop. Been doing it like this since 92. Played low for a while when you thought I was through. Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected. This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected. Bad skills, no faking, there is no one great. Cause I'm bringing more folks and over one for later. Not here to play games, so you better be real. You don't like me, so what? I really don't care. All the time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped. You suck a step to the side unless you want to get dropped. When my finish, I'll straight knock you out. Please allow me to tell you what it's all about. I'm gonna wind it up. Then I'm driving it home, it's Ruby D, baby. Huh, I got a cap for your dome. I got a cap for your dome. We got a cap for your dome. We got a cap for your dome. This has been a James Rock Street production.